Hey everybody, welcome to the Renaissance Woodworker and welcome to the first part of a multi-part series where I'll be building this dining table. This is commissioned for a customer up in Maine where my in-laws live and the customer had approached me saying that they wanted the dining room table and they had a design already in mind. Well here's the thing, I was sent a link to Crate and Barrel and this is the design that she wanted. Basically it looks like a picnic table. And I immediately took issue with this. It just looked way too spindly. I wasn't real happy with these supports underneath the tabletop. They just were ridiculous looking. The tabletop itself was really thin. The legs themselves really spindly. And most importantly, this dinky little trestle. To me, this whole thing was going to be really, really rickety. So I began to talk with her about what she wanted. She told me she wanted to use walnut. She wanted a nice, dark, kind of rustic look. So if I could get reclaimed lumber or if I would distress it to look really old, we would do that. Well, the more I thought about that aesthetic and this spindly little table, I just thought, this is not going to work. So I grabbed some of the dimensions from Crate and Barrel and looked at some of the proportions and things and came into SketchUp. And this is what I came up with. Basically, I beefed everything up. The trestle is the first thing. Instead of this little spindly kind of two by four-ish looking thing, this is a full six inches wide. It is also a full two inches, or excuse me, two and a half inches thick. The legs are also two and a half inches thick, and the tabletop is two inches thick. I've added breadboard ends to kind of make it look more like an interior dining table instead of a picnic table with the exposed end grain. The stretchers underneath to attach the tabletop are integrated into these legs and they're bridle jointed in place. So essentially from the perspective of someone standing next to the table or even seated at the table, those these stretcher pieces are invisible and really all they do is serve to allow us to attach the tabletop to the legs using a series of elongated holes and screws. The whole thing is just a basic trestle table. The tenon comes through, the tusk comes in, locks it in place, so it can be knocked flat, and that's going to be key because I have to deliver this up to Southport Island, Maine. Not only that, I'm going to be doing uh, quite a bit of the construction and certainly the finishing on site at my in-law's garage in Southport, Maine. I'm not going to have any of the tools that I would normally have in my shop, and really it's kind of a guessing game as to what the environment's going to be like that I'm working in up there. So here is the basic design. I've included this SketchUp model in the post for this first video, and I'm going to walk you through step by step. First part, we're going to focus on all of the milling.
So since I'm working with number two common walnut, and there's a lot of knots, and the client wants knots and a rustic look, I wanted to stabilize things a little. So I've got some two-part epoxy from West Systems, mixed it up, and added a little bit of vintage maple trans tint dye to it. Taped off the bottom of the holes, poured the epoxy in until the knots overflow, and let it cure for about 24 to 36 hours. Now I want to joint the boards. I've got four tabletop boards and I need to join them together into two 20 inch wide panels. I won't be able to transport the full 36 inch wide tabletop on my way up to main. So I'm just going to glue up these two panels and I've got to joint those edges. So as the joiner kind of stutters its way across the board and slowly starts to take a full width shaving, I want to double check that I am creating a square plane here. A lot of people would use the match plane technique where you fold the boards together and plane them all at once. But when you're dealing with stock that's almost two inches thick, there's just not a plane wide enough to tackle that full four inch wide surface of a match plane board. This is where being able to joint a board square without that match planing shortcut is absolutely imperative. So the key is just to keep checking with the square. Use a lumber crayon to mark the high spots and just keep working your way down, if necessary, spot tackling those high spots until you've got one consistent flat and square surface. It took a little while, but I was able to joint the four edges to create my two 20 inch wide panels. So I warmed up some old brown hide glue and just painted it on the surface. Now, this wood is pretty thirsty, so it took a fair amount of glue for this uh, six foot long tabletop. And then I just flipped them down and clamped them up in the parallel clamps. I wanted to get that seam, that center joint, as flat as possible, but I am not overly concerned about it because I will be running these through the planer one more time, not only to remove the overflown epoxy, just to level out the surface. And there are my two 20 inch panels ready for the transport up to Maine.